New commanders have landed in Rise of Kingdoms and are the are these commanders good? I'm I'm still figuring it out. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisco Gaming, a sponsored content creator for Rise of Kingdoms. And I love when new commanders land in the game. So today we're gonna check out Montezuma and Trajan to see are they any good? If you like Rise of Kingdoms guides that help you get value and smash your enemies, hey, consider smashing that subscribe button for daily Rise of Kingdoms videos. Reset happened Sunday into Monday, and we got these new commanders. Let's start with Montezuma. Leadership, peacekeeping, skill. Also, leadership, versatility, support on Trajan. Versatility, very interesting. And peacekeeping here from Montezuma. We see that Montezuma is... From the Mightiest Governor. This is normally where you see a conquering commander. So he's got to do something really good. Like really good. If we're going to go out of our way in a Mightiest Governor cycle. To get a peacekeeping commander. In addition. Starting on 3-8. We can pick whatever commander we want in Mightiest Governor. So. I mean he's got to be better than literally every other option. For people to want to hunt him. Let's talk about what he does. Leadership. Peacekeeping. Skill. Active skill. Does an active skill damage, direct damage factor, of 1,400 and reduces the counterattack damage of the target by 15% for 4 seconds. Let me tell you, that's actually extremely good. That's probably the only thing on him where I'm going to be like, that's extremely good. But this is extremely good, and it's good for primarily one situation. Swarming, obviously. You reduce the counterattack damage of the target by 15%, and everybody who swarms that same target benefits. I actually think that's really, really good. Even better than usual, by the way. Not in a murder ball, but rather in a swarm for Ark of Osiris. Imagine this. You're swarming a building in Ark of Osiris. That building has one and a half million troops in it. Reducing the counterattack damage it deals by 15% to all those marches that are swarming it that only have 300,000 troops. Yeah, that's a, that's a really big deal. So I like this active skill a lot, actually. It's really good for a murder ball and really good in Ark of Osiris. However, up next, Flower War. Already this conveys my feelings, not that I have anything against flowers, but damage to barbarians increased by 50%. Actually, wow, 50%. So we have a Minamoto and double C alternative. 50% damage to barbs is a Minamoto double C alternative. Both commanders gain 25% increased experience and attacks against barbarians have a 10% chance to reduce that target's health by 20%. For three seconds. That can trigger at most once every three seconds. And when maxed, by the way, you can reduce the enemy's health by 50%. I mean, really amazing for barbs. Don't get me wrong. This dude looks like he is the top tier barb master, I think, coming out of the newest set of commanders. But let's continue on. Next skill, Jaguar Warrior. Troops led by this commander gain 10% march speed. Okay, I like march speed. And 20% attack. I'm good with that. When performing a normal attack against a target inflicted with health reduction, troops led by this commander get healed. Healing factor 700, triggering at most every five seconds. So when performing a normal attack against a target inflicted with a reduced health debuff, here's the thing that's amazing about that. The thing that's amazing about that is that you can do that every five seconds. It can trigger at most every five seconds, but I see no chance to trigger listed here. Now, if it's actually a 10% chance when you're performing a normal attack to get this, you know, healing, it's less exciting. But if you just get this all the time, it's actually a huge amount of healing. I'm not saying you'd go like all infantry and pair with a commander that reduces health like Leonidas or something like that. But if you could find the right combination that's reducing health, you could actually get a huge amount of healing. But I, okay, Let's continue on, see what we have here. Fourth skill, Triple Alliance. I love what can, I can actually pronounce the skills here. When this commander launches a rally attack, troop capacity increased by 10%. Okay, so they ex expect us to launch rallies with him. I don't know if I would do that, but when troops led by this commander take skill damage, they will deal direct damage to the attacker, damage factor 600, and that can trigger at most every five seconds. That's not amazing. Like, it's good anti-swarm technology, but also, you really would rather that that damage get done to the garrison that you're actually rallying rather than the swarmer who's hitting you. But okay. Um, 600 damage factor every five seconds. And that's when you're taking skill damage. 
It is guaranteed when you take the skill damage, though. I don't see a chance for that to trigger. That could be really good. I mean, 600 damage factor every five seconds. I, I mean, you know, this, co this commander has potential. I'm going to say that this commander has potential. Let's look at his expertise. When he launches a rally attack, okay, it's the same troop capacity increased by 10%. The change, however, it is now a direct damage factor of 800 and can trigger every four seconds. Oh, man. A skill damage garrison. Does it exist? Theodora? Yep. Skill damage. Zenobia? Yep. Does skill damage. Are they doing skill damage every four seconds? Mm, probably not. Pretty frequent, but uh, not every four seconds. But okay. I think this commander could actually be pretty decent. I think they could be pretty decent. They don't require a certain troop type. If you can find a rally pair that reduces health, it's interesting. I'll mention, however, he's only got three relevant skills, which is a huge red flag. It's a huge red flag. But if we talk about what's happening in Ark of Osiris, let's be real. In top tier Ark of Osiris, rallying, it's, it's a joke. Like you rally the structure and they either swarm the rally or the rally is not going to take down the Zenobia Theodora that's garrisoning there. Like Zenobia Theodora, if well garrisoned in an equal fight, it's probably going to win. So... What does this commander actually give us if you rallied? I guess the debuff is pretty cool. Is it enough to make this commander worth? The sustain is pretty cool here. I don't I don't know. This is a commander where I feel like it's a wait and see, but out of the gates, I'm not thinking, man, this is somebody I've got to get and got to try, which is kind of a weird feeling to have about a Mightiest Governor commander. Usually, I'm pretty psyched about them. The next commander, Trajan, which... Yes, I looked up how to pronounce it. What? I mean, I didn't know. I looked it up. I looked it up, okay? He is a Roman soldier, for what it's worth. It's like right up here on my screen right now. Thank you, Wikipedia, for that. So, leadership, versatility, support. First skill, deals direct damage factor to the current target, 300 damage factor. What is this? The Belisarius of Legendaries? We're looking at the Belisarius of Legendaries, except it's sort of a Joan of Arc here. Look at this. Troops led by this commander and nearby allied troops. Gain 25% increased skill damage for 3 seconds and 40 rage per second. But incoming damage is increased by 25% for 3 seconds. That is very strange. Where is this good? This is good when you're winning and it's bad when you're losing. Straight up. If you outnumber the enemy and you got a lot of marches nearby, that's really good for you. The problem that I see here is that if you're outnumbered and outgunned in a fight... Taking 25% more damage is really bad. All you're doing is increasing your skill damage. So you'd better really need, you'd better really need the extra rage or you are in some serious trouble. So already I've got some questions about this commander, but okay, looking to his next skill. Just, this is just very solid. 40% of stats, defense and health. I just want to call attention to the fact that Artemisia gives defense and health. 40% of it, right? And Artemisia, everybody's like, whoa, she's so tanky. It's unbelievable. Even though she does damage to herself, they're like, wow, she's so tanky. So I just want to say 40% defense and health on any commander, especially given that you pick any troop type here, that's worthy of thinking about twice. So let's keep that in mind as we continue on. Very tanky. Great expeditions. Troop capacity, 10%. Even more tankiness there. When leading... Three different troop types. Now, this is weird. It's 2021. Everybody's got equipment that focuses on one troop type. So I guess you could bring a small amount of a different troop type. But this whole three troop types thing, I mean, I feel like, honestly, I feel like it's a huge, huge gap that needs some addressing in this game. But okay. Okay. Three different troop types. They will deal additional direct damage to the current target when the active skill is used. 300 damage factor. Okay, so 300 more damage factor on the active skill. We're, we're doing double what a Belisarius does now. Cool. And increase damage dealt to the target mm, by 20% for three seconds. That's pretty good. Damage taken increased by the target. 20%, three seconds is very good. 300 damage factor is fine. 10% capacity is fine. I'm not overwhelmed. I'm certainly not overwhelmed. But okay, let's continue on. Let's continue on. You've got to have mixed troops with this dude. Which, by the way, really limits the possibilities. The fourth skill. While on the map, so not in a resource node, not in a stronghold, not in a garrison, 
Normal attacks will grant troops a stack of 6% increased defense for 10 seconds with the duration resetting each time a new stack is gained. So this is a stacking defense buff. It stacks 10 times and can trigger once every 8 seconds. So every 8 seconds, you're going to get another stack of this. So for a sufficiently long fight, 60% defense. So this dude is built for rallies, which I find confusing because here... 10% troop capacity is not relevant for rallies. I find this commander confusing. Maybe somebody knows kind of what they would do with him. But, but let, let, let's keep looking here. You have, you have to be on the map. So it's like a rally or field. Long encounters is what he wants. Five good emperors. This influences the active skill, increasing the damage factor beyond Belisarius status up to 400 Troops led by this commander and all nearby troops gain 30% increased skill damage, up 5%. <laughs> Woohoo! 5% 5, 5 increased skill damage and 10 extra rage per second. However, incoming damage is still increased by that 25%. Man, I, I don't know. There's so much going on here. You need to be the overdog in the fight. You need to be able to bring multiple troop types. You need to be in a prolonged fight. This is, I don't know where this commander is good yet. And I've done my fair share of underestimating commanders in the past. So it's entirely possible. I'm just missing the thing that he's going to do that's so amazing. This commander is going to come from the Wheel of Fortune. And as we covered earlier today, you'll get to pick the commander in Mightiest Governor and Wheel of Fortune. Card up in the top if you'd like to see that video. I am very eager to hear your thoughts down below in the comments about these commanders, but don't go just yet because we need to go and get a look at an event that just showed up. We'll have to do this in a live stream. The Hunt for History is back. It's here for two days and two days only. I've got a small number of hammers here. We'll have to go and purchase the bundle. We also get a look at the archeological dig event. And over the course of the two days of this event, it looks like you can get a grand total of 30 free to play hammers, okay. And when we look at the rewards, the rewards have changed. I think this is actually kind of interesting. What we see here now is that you can choose between the same patterns we saw before, as well as some speed ups or materials. Now, I think that is very interesting as a choice. The materials and the speed ups, technically, the epic material crates are worth more. There are 40 of them in here, which I find a little confusing there i mean there aren't 40 floors to this is there is the hunt for history now 40 floors how many floors are there you must choose a floor ultimate rewards will be on better floors that are multiples of five i mean <laughs> i don't know i don't think you're going through and doing 40 floors of this right here and i don't think there's an infinite number of floors that you can do however i really like this reward over here ancient stratagems i think that's fantastic i'll probably pick up the wind scars blueprint as well and then i'll just switch over to the materials everything will be all in on materials for me personally now the occult treasure floor is where things also get kind of interesting with some new options you can go all in on one piece which i think is really good by the way you can actually build the one piece or you could take it to chance and get random pieces from the set which is interesting only in as much that we haven't seen a place to get set legs yet so the only way you can get them is from a random chest. That seems like a real pain in the booty, but maybe that's what people will end up doing. I personally am going to be going for some gloves, maybe over here. The Embraces the Eternal Empire, get the two-piece bonus on my insane infantry set. But I'd be eager to hear again down below in the comments if this is an event that you'll be planning to do or just skip entirely. There is a bundle associated with this event. Let's see. I know in Kingdom 2, it had potentially changed. And, uh, wait a minute. No bundle? How? What? Wait. No bundle. Hold on. How are you supposed to do the event? Where do you get your hammers? Well, the event is here. There's supposed to be a bundle. Either I'm blind, which could be. Or, I guess the bundle isn't here yet. Well, we'll have to wait until that's here to do our live stream and go completely ham. If you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor. Throw a like on here. Consider subscribing. 
We're going to be letting you know exactly what we think of these commanders as soon as we get a chance to play around with them on the battlefield and see what they're worth. I am certainly skeptical and will be looking at the comments for your ideas. Until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.